Hello everybody and welcome back to the engine house. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about scale. Things such as trees, okay. So I was making these. This is one I just recently made. It's not finished yet. Uh, there's some other stuff I need to do with it here before I call it finished. And I got to looking at this and I thought, you know, it looks more like something you'd find on an HO scale layout or an N scale. And uh, well, if you put it next to that HO scale locomotive, of course, it looks like a pretty good sized tree. Okay. Um, it, uh, it would look good, just as good on an N scale as well. So, but now here's the thing. I model an O scale or what's considered O27, which covers uh, a lot of the pre-war period, post-war period up until the, uh, recently, I think even in the 70s, I don't know when Lionel actually started with full, a uh, real O scale. O27, the locomotives were designed to go around a 27 degree radius. So, you know, around the base of a Christmas tree or something of that nature. The corporation built them. I don't think that was their original intent, but they're um, considerably smaller. Let me pull this out of here. This is the largest locomotive I have. And there we have it sitting next to. Now, if this was actual O and not O27, it would probably be about twice this size. Okay. Uh, an O27 or an actual O scale locomotive would not be able to go around a 27 degree radius or around my track or through my tunnels. So for O27, this tree looks about average. It's not really a big tree, it's not really a small tree. So honestly, too, is what is the scale of a tree? If you've seen enough trees, uh, if you've been out in the Pacific Northwest like I have and gone through the redwoods, um, those things are huge. How would you say, okay, that's, what, what, how do you scale? How do you scale bushes? How do you scale a tree? Um, so I do them this size. One is they're fun to make, for starters, and I'll show you how. Uh, the other is um, I could do an actual O-scale tree, which would be as taller or as tall as uh, um, Hansel and Gretel's confectionaries, which, by the way, the buildings I modeled are actual O-scale buildings. I built those on the 148 scale, um, and, you know, I could have probably cut Hansel and Gretel's down by a third, and it would have looked just as good. Granny and Red's would, would fit just fine. So anyway, for scale, um, and I didn't drag the tender out. I could see no reason in doing that. So I'm going to show you here. I'm going to put this bad boy right here. And I'm going to show you, here we are, and why I model the size I model. Here is pre-war Lionel. This was built roughly, uh, this was the pre-war period covers from the conception roughly after World War I, let's say. Uh, Lionel Corporation started in 1900. They consider pre-war anything prior to World War II. Um, so the 1930s, I believe, is what they consider. This was made in 1942, and the reason I know this is because it has, these can be spun around so that it can hook up to earlier Lionel rolling stock. These are the older style um, couplers, and then they went with the knuckle couplers later on. Well, in 1942, uh, Lionel, I believe, stopped production in January of 1942 or thereabouts, shortly after we officially, I mean, we got into the war this, this after December the 7th, but officially things started, industry started moving into war production after the first of the year, 1942. So a lot of industry started 
turning. So that was 1942, and I'm going to say January. I'm not 100% sure. But here is post-war. Now I'm going to move these two side by side here. This isn't taller than the pre-war. You can tell a little bit of the difference. This, this is more rounded on the top. This is flatter on the top. This is obviously longer than the pre-war. This is post-war. And this, this was 1950s right here. They consider the post-war era from 1946 to, I think, 1964, I think. It's 1960s, is post-war. After that, they go into the modern era, is what they believe is what they call it. Anyway, pre-war, post-war. Now, one second here. This is actual O, okay? This is O scale. You can see the difference in size already. Uh, it is just slightly taller than the post-war. It's slightly wider. Uh, the gauge, of course, is the same. This is also longer than the post-war. And, of course, it's definitely longer than the pre-war. So you can see the difference. And the locomotives, of course, went up in size as actual O. Um, this, of course, will go through my tunnel there, barely. I had these, these are my grandsons. This is his, he wanted uh, some of these. These are from Menards. I did an unboxing on these. Um, they're here because my grandson has no place to put them, so they stay with my stuff. There's his own shelf over there. Um, these will go around <laughs> the turnout but they just about clip the uh, the side of it for the switch, where you switch it from one track to another. It comes really close. <laughs> so it, it's tight. And a locomotive wouldn't be able to do that. An actual O-scale locomotive would not be able to make that turn. Uh, it would actually clip, and it would be a lot larger. Um, there are some videos out there where guys have actual O scale and they are huge. Um, I don't have the room here for something that big. Uh, this, this is a very small basement. This is a hundred year old house. Um, so I, I do pre and post-war, which I like. Um, everybody has their own, uh, what they like. Um, I tend to like the pre and post-war. Uh, I do like HO. This is the the only piece I have left, it's missing a piece right there. But, you know, I'll find that eventually. But anyway, um, so I just wanted to talk about scale and why, I mean, the trees I could build, and I might just build a closer to a, what it would be an O scale tree later on. Um, it wouldn't be that hard to do. Uh, but these are just fine. These, these for, for O27 scale, they're a good medium sized tree. Uh, they look decent. This again, I'm not quite finished with this yet. There's going to be some more stuff going on here and I'll bring this over here. Um, here is, I've got them sitting here because If you're a Lord of the Rings fan, I made an end. And by the way, these are coffee grounds. These are covered, he's covered in coffee grounds here, glued to the twisted wire. Uh, that will eventually be covered um, by uh, thinned out. Um, it will be thinned out <laughs> spackling compound that I will be thinning with some water. I have another tree that uh, is going to be a, a, a young birch tree that's going to go here. Um, and uh, I have some more stuff here on the layout that I've done on the uh, scenery here. And so we'll get to that here in a minute. 
but the birch is going here. This is going over there a little bit, and there'll be another small, this little twig right here. You can't, you can hardly see it. That light's rather annoying, but if I shut that off, it'll be dark. Um, this is a little, just a little spray coming up. It's going to be up there uh, in one of the cave openings when I'm done and I'll be building some more trees as we go along. So little by little here, there'll be more trees. Anyway, if one thing here is I do wire. Uh, I use this stuff is from a greenhouse. It's uh, Gordon's Greenhouse Limited is what this is called. And I got this whole box, which you can see, the whole box is pretty much there for a buck at a yard sale. And this is what I make trees out of. So let me uh, take some of these out. I'll get the required number out and we'll be right back. Okay. I'm using 20 of these. These are very thin. I've seen people use uh, use uh, regular like, uh, you know, 12 volt wire you use for cars or wiring your layout, uh, 10 gauge or something of that nature, which, uh, you know, they strip the stuff off of them and use that, which is great. That's fantastic stuff. Um, I got these again, really cheap. And I use 20 uh, you can go more. I've got more laying here. You can go thicker if you want. Uh, but keep in mind, you have to twist this stuff. I'm going to give you a quick on this. And then uh, I'm going to twist this here like that. One second. And I have to get one more thing out here. Okay. Bend it. Helps to have a pair of pliers, especially if your hands are like mine. A dowel. We want this in here, got to have it held. I'm going to start here and we're going to twist. And you can decide how much trunk you want on that and your roots. These will become the roots when I'm all done. You can decide how much of this you want how tall you want to go uh, if you want to leave a couple of branches down here you can pull let's say we pull about half of those out okay and then we go this way and then here we pull another half out and we wrap this there, kind of like that. And then we do, and here's where the pliers come in kind of handy here. We want to make sure. And get a good twist in there. And we want to do the same here. And we want to do that here. So you get good twist in and, and you can get the general idea here where it's starting to look. You can branch these off and make branches and these here and here and you can twist these around and i'm not going to go do the whole thing right now you kind of get the general idea it'll end up something like this when you're all done okay and then i coat them um the this i tried the coffee grounds on i have another one here that i'm currently using sawdust I paint it with some glue, put sawdust on it, and then after it's all dry, 
then I put on the watered down spackling compound and then we paint it. Um, and I think honestly, quite honestly, if you look at that, that looks pretty good. It's uh, painted black, burnt umber, and then a dark gray, just kind of brushed on, dry brushed on there. I will show you that in another video. Um, there's hundreds of videos out there of people making trees different ways. Um, one, and the reason I brought up scale is because Boomer Diorama actually built a tree. He has an HO uh, shelf layout. And he lives in, a, he lives in British Columbia in the mountains. British Columbia is an absolutely beautiful country. It's a lot of mountains, a lot of lakes, very beautiful. Been up there numerous times. Uh, I love the country up there. But he, uh, he built, he made a tree for his layout that would look just fine on an O scale. It, it was, it was large. I mean, and he even said the same thing. Don't, you know, the trees, there's really no scale. Uh, he's seen big trees in, in British Columbia that are just absolutely huge. And I have too. Uh, so, you know, what some people would call this is a small tree. It may be, but you put a tree this big on an HO layout. Is it the scale? Does it even matter? Um, it, it would be just as good. And, uh, you know, any, any side, this would work H O N. I don't know about Z, maybe, who knows? Uh, I've never had a Z. So, but you just keep twisting these and twisting these. And, uh, this, it takes some time to do this. And like I said, I'm not going to go overly crazy on this. You can make branches as thick as you want or as thin as you want. Um, and this is, again, where pliers come in. And honestly, I used uh, my drill on one of them. And uh, used it at the end and held, held this end with the paintbrush and put the ends in and wound it up so far and then made, uh, made branches and stuff out of it. And... It's uh, sitting up there with some sawdust glued to it right now. Once I get a couple more trees made, I'm going to... Uh, so then we can just kind of do this. Bob Ross would say, let's say we got a happy little tree right here, right? <laughs> if any of you are familiar with the uh, late Bob Ross. Um, hard to believe he was a uh, drill instructor. Air Force uh, boot camp, and he yelled all the time. And he said he was once he he didn't want to yell anymore. That's why he always talked in a very calm voice when he was doing his paintings. Uh, guy was fascinating. Um, okay, you see this? There it is. I can take the paintbrush away, and you just keep doing that until you end up with what you were looking for. And you can bend them, shape them. Uh, you can trim some of these off if you think they're too long. You can make your branches any way you want. You can mold them. Uh, you know, just do as you want. This is very, very satisfying. Um, we're gonna twist this one just a little bit, once or twice more, and then we're gonna come off here. And we're gonna, Make another branch. Uh, one of the things Bob Ross was famous for is saying, it's your world, do what you want. And uh, I agree. Uh, you're the one modeling this stuff. You're the one building it. Uh, there is no right or wrong way to enjoy the hobby. Um, you do it as you please. Uh, my layout is fantasy. Uh, if I can find the uh, the uh, model railroader magazine I have that uh, 
has the uh, dinosaurs. <laughs> this is from the 19, late 60s or 70s, I don't remember. I have to go through, I have a whole bunch of model railroaders over there, and uh, I haven't gone through them in years, but uh, somebody ended up doing his layout, and it had dinosaurs uh, pulling logs, dinosaurs doing different work, kind of like Dinotopia, if you've ever seen those books or any of that stuff. Um, and you notice I'm just pulling random out here. There's no great, let me get these branches. The nice thing about these also is you can move these out of the way when you need to and go off however you want. I'm not counting any per se. Um, if I wanted to make a taller tree, it could be done. Um, you just have to uh, bend it around, come up so far into here, bend another loop in and loop it and, and make kind of a, a, a burl or something in the tree. I'm going to experiment with it and see what I can do to make a taller tree just, just to see if I can do it. Um, and maybe even thicker uh, because, again, trees have no scale. Um, nature doesn't care. And uh, why should you, right? And you can add, like I said, as many wires as you want, but you got to keep in mind, you have to be able to twist these. And sometimes that can be easier said than done, especially if your hands are kind of like mine. And some days they don't want to work. And uh, you end up, um, you know, you end up really not wanting to do. And it's hard on your hands. And there we have it. That took me about under 15 minutes to do right there. And, you know, I can do a little more. I can tighten these up. I can move them around. I can do some stuff with this if I want to. There's, you know, five or six of them here. I can leave them. I can twist a few. Uh, we can do whatever we want, right? And then I can make cut these and do the same thing with these um, that you do with these to make your roots. And then I stuck a toothpick in the bottom of that one and I unwound it a little bit, shoved the toothpick in there and stuck some glue in it and then tightened it back up. And then when I cut these and uh, that kept a toothpick in there for the most part, but there you go. There you have it. Easy, easy. It's uh, about the same height, a good HO scale tree, or even if you do uh, pre or post-war Lionel, uh, S, this would work for S as well. Um, my S scale locomotive is down here somewhere. I'm not sure where. Uh, I don't. I don't see it. <laughs> Normally, I put my hand right on that silly thing, and just today I can't. Uh, I think I must have packed it up. It was in one of my it was in my uh, talk on model railroading, so it's probably packed up. But anyway, there you have it. Pretty simple. Uh, next video, we'll show you it's, you know, I use sawdust or coffee grounds. If you're going to use used coffee grounds, stick them in the oven at 200 for about an hour. Let them dry. Uh, and once they're nice and dry, then put them in a container. And then when you're ready, you can paint these up with some glue and dab, um, sprinkle those on. And there you have it. Anyway, while I've got you here, let's go look at the layout. I'll give you a layout update here. Okay, here we are. I've, this area is its going to have a birch or two right here. I'm going to put a birch tree or two right in here. Um, I had this, this stone was uh, the last owner of the house left a whole bucket of this stuff and some white stuff, white stone, laying out, in the, sitting in the garage. And I thought, gee, you know, it's almost the same color as my cliff walls. Why not just have some rocks tumbling down here, ended up down here. 
I may stick a rock up here somewhere later. I did the same thing over here. I got a rock there, a rock there, one there. I've got some more over in there. Uh, the tree that I'm working on is going right there. And the other tree will go right there, the little tiny one that I have. And then, of course, this area will be considered finished, except for, of course, up here. I still have to work up there, but I'm going to go ahead and get on this over here next. So, anyway, in the meantime, also, let's go over here. You can see over here, this is going to be, uh, the yellow is for birch and, of course, Japanese maple, if I make one. The orange, burnt orange, is for this tree right here. That will be glued on to this there's a, a guy that I saw that was doing that, and I really like the way it came out. So I'm going to try it and see how it works, and hopefully it comes out. You see the, uh, of course, half of a T-Rex skeleton. That's going to be buried up over in there, sticking out of the cliff face or somewhere over in there when I'm done. Uh, since I'm going to be working on that area next, I went ahead and built it. I have to prime it and paint it because that does not look like bone that's been petrified. That looks like plastic. So we'll be doing something with that. And while I'm here, I'll show you the diorama. This is drying. Once this is dry, I have to vacuum up the excess stone. Okay, or gravel anyway, that's there. The, you can see I put down some some of the gravel that I have, the sand. And next, later, once it's dry and thoroughly dry, I've got to brush off or vacuum up the excess. And then, of course, I'm going to paint it to match closely what's already there. And then next will be the uh, grass area that uh, you can see over here, the grass over there. And there's a little bit here. And then, of course, I'll be painting that. And then I'll start adding the pieces back in that go in and then I'll be working on the fence. And of course, the last thing I'll be doing is cleaning this up, working on it and uh, fixing anything that needs repaired. And then I'll be putting this all back together as well as the lean to that's right there. I have to finish taking that lean to apart. Now that I can, it's off. I can show you, see how that roof is warped. Okay, I have to pop that off. I have to figure out how to flatten that roof out and glue it back down. And I also have to pull one of these off and make a new one for right here. And of course, I'll be cleaning this up a little bit with some detergent and uh, some, uh, I don't know why this, this is here. That's kind of odd. Maybe I'll just pop that one off, but I think that was there for some, I don't know why, that's there, that's odd. The one that's here is missing. But anyway, I'm going to be cleaning this up a little bit and then putting it back together and putting new shingles on it. That's a little at a time, a <laughs> little at a time. That is the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and, and make some trees. Try. Give it a try. Give it a shot. Um, I'll be showing some more of this as I go through and make some more. Um, it's really, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it, and uh, I hope you give it a try. I think you'll like it. And um, you know, enjoy the video. Like it. Subscribe. Comment. I love comments. Um, and, uh, of course, that little bit that I showed over there was for uh, Jersey Highlands Bruce. If you're watching, and I know you will, you wanted to see it when it was closer to finished. <laughs> That's about as close as it's going to get right there, uh, Bruce. So I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, I'll say goodbye for now. I hope you all have a great day. Uh, we're getting ready for a, uh, a winter storm in March. It's the... Uh, Right now, it's currently, when I'm filming this, it's the first full day of spring. Um, <laughs> by the time this is aired, it'll probably be April. But anyway, hopefully by then, we're supposed to get 6 to 3 to 10 inches. Nobody knows. It's either 3 to 6 or 6 to 10 
or we get a couple of inches. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.